Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here, bringing you another video from a, a lovely afternoon here in Jerusalem. So something uh, about me is that when I get into a certain, when I discover a new technology platform that I like, I get somewhat, I try to, I try to avoid using the word evangelical, specifically because I'm, I'm Jewish. So it, it, it's, a bit, it's a bit strange for me to say I become evangelical about something, but I become, um, a big cheerleader for a certain uh, when I encounter technology I think is very very uh, innovative and exciting so something I've been using recently and recommending to clients because I do a lot of uh, streaming recording and helping clients with stuff like that is a product called riverside.fm and it received high praise from uh, Curtis Judge um, on YouTube, who is someone I uh, immensely respect as an audio guru, but people are like, you know, when you're when you're dealing with people who are, let's say, without trying to sound condescending, less technical, people say, oh, but we want to record using Zoom. What's what's what does this do? What's wrong with Zoom? Or we know what Zoom is. So I thought I'd prepare this little explainer video that I can send to my friends or others, maybe not clients. Um, who are hesitant. I'm just going to explain what's unique about Riverside.fm. So Riverside.fm is what's called a double-ended recording platform, sometimes known as a uh, double-ender in, in slang. And what that means basically is that it records things going on um, locally and then syncs up to the cloud. So before, let's look at how your typical uh, Zoom recording process works. So you have, let's take a typical um, guest host recording scenario, right? So you've got your guest remote recording. You've got your guest sitting in, I don't know, India. And uh, you've got your host sitting in, let's say the United States. Okay, so if you were doing a podcast or a remote video interview, most people would use Zoom for this, so that's where their mind would go to first. So I've added a Zoom, uh, Zoom's logo here just to, uh, just to demonstrate how this works. So when you're doing a Zoom call, right, you're gonna be using a webcam and that's going up to Zoom and your host is also uh, going up to Zoom. Now what's really going on is if you look at, if you've ever, recorded using like OBS Studio, which is what I'm using to actually record this video, and you've recorded your webcam without any codec, without any compression, it's very, very heavy. It's so heavy, in fact, that it would not be practical to stream, to, to stream the raw feed of your recording webcam to the other person because it would overwhelm the bandwidth available, the person wouldn't be able to, um, basically it, it, it would be buffering like absolutely crazy. So the way something like Zoom works is that when you do a Zoom call, your webcam's video feed is going up to the cloud. And remember, the cloud is just someone else's computer. So it's going up to Zoom's servers, but your webcam quality is being compressed on the way so that your, uh, your host can get it in real time and likewise, their video is being compressed along the way, right? So you're actually seeing one another's compressed videos. You may notice on a Zoom call that you, when you're on your own Zoom, you look great. And sometimes if like you're, uh, the person you're Zooming with does a screen share, you look not so great. The reason for that is you're looking at your local webcam in your Zoom client. And when you are the person you're Zooming with, does a screen share, you're looking at you as you see them. I know this is a little bit of a tongue twister. It's getting hard for me to, um, to, to keep this straight as well. So if you do something like record a Zoom call, let's say Zoom's cloud recording, which is very good, Zoom cloud recording, you're going to be pulling out a recording from Zoom here. So what you're actually gonna be getting is the compressed uh, video from both the guest and the host. So you're losing an awful lot of, you're sacrificing an awful lot of quality for no good reason. Now let's look at something like Riverside.fm. Riverside.fm is something called a double-ended recording platform or a double-ender. Now let me just explain again using the same diagram format how it works. So it actually works similarly 
in a sense, right? So when you're having, when you're doing your remote Zoom interviews, you're going to be sending up your uh, your data to Riverside.fm. Your guest or host or whoever is going to be also sending up their data via Riverside.fm, and you're going to be seeing each other in a uh, live, real, compressed feed. Uh, in other words, it's going to be so so that you can conduct the interview. Now that is where the similarity ends because there's a big other feature. Now there's a reason I'm copying and pasting the Riverside logo um, two times. So that's how the actual inter interview works. But after you stop the interview, there's an upload process. And what happens during the upload process is that the local file, so as you're having the interview, you're seeing each other via riverside.fm, but each person, the guest and the host, is recording the original audio and video from their webcam without any compression, the preserving the best possible quality on their local computer. Then when the recording session ends, both parties are going to be uploading. Um, and this is what this is when you when you're using Riverside.fm, you need to pre-instruct your clients. You have to say after the interview, there's going to be an upload process and you need to let the computer run right you it'll, it'll there'll be a pop-up but you have to as i said when you're dealing with sort of less tech savvy people you need to say whatever you do do not close the tab while the upload's happening because if you do um there's different scenarios so let's let's not cover that so that's what happens that's the difference between riverside.fn and, and a double ender you get the live feed is going to be this degraded quality just so that people can see one another and have that conversation but then after and that's the difference between the problem with using Zoom for remote interviews, et cetera, et cetera, is that Zoom is a video conferencing platform. It's not designed to be a remote interview platform. And something like Riverside.fm or other double-ended uh, recording platforms for audio um, will basically, they're designed for this kind of scenario. So once you finish the recording, the guest and the host both sync their data up to the Riverside.fm cloud. And then I'll do a little arrow like this because they all end up in the cloud uh, eventually but what what you're going to end up with in the cloud in this case is going to be the original audio original video and something another thing riverside.fm does that's great is that it splits up uh, the files so you have your guest um, and your host uh, video and your guest and your host audio four separate files so you can play around with those however you want so if you're a video editor you know you can have side by side for a portion and then cut to full size for the guest full size for the host but everything is uh, synchronized perfectly because of the way this works so that's basically why riverside.fm is not the same thing as recording interviews via zoom and that's also why i think it's pretty amazing tech thank you guys very much for uh watching this video hope it was uh useful and if you want to get more videos from me please subscribe to this youtube channel